of these. So if I ask you guys to describe the transformations here, um, again, the purpose of this, guys, is I'm just using a general f of x. So the parent function here is just f of x. So basically what I'm asking you is, what am I doing to the f of x? And you can see I'm multiplying by 2 on the outside. So then we say, oh, what are the transformations when you multiply by 2 on the outside? That's very similar. Hopefully you understand that's going to be a vertical stretch. Doesn't matter what the function is. All those, you have 12 different functions on that sheet of paper. It doesn't matter which one I pick. If you multiply one of those functions on the outside by 2, it's going to be a vertical stretch. Do you guys understand and agree on that? So it's like this universal transformations. So we can describe transformations on a specific function, or we can also just use you know, some generic ones. So this is going to be a vertical stretch of, um, of 2 by a factor of 2 of 2. And then we have the x minus 3. We know that when we're um, subtracting inside of a function or the x minus 3, that's going to shift the graph 3 units to the right. So I'll just use shorthand motion. Right 3. All right. Looking at the next one, um, you guys can see we have negative 3 halves. Now, this is the important one. A lot of people see a fraction. They say, oh, that's a compression. 3 halves, guys, is larger than 1. right? So therefore, that is a stretch. So this is a vertical stretch of 3 halves. Nope, because remember when we're dealing with the stretch and compression, we're dealing with the absolute value. If you remember looking at the notes, we talked about the absolute value of a. But the negative is important. You're, so you're multiplying by negative on the outside. That means it's a vertical reflection, right? It has to impact the graph vertically. So we don't want to reflect about the y-axis, because that would be a horizontal reflection. So it's a reflection about the x-axis. So we'd say reflect the x-axis. And now we're adding a 4 outside of the function. Do you guys see what it looks like when you add something outside compared to inside? Do you guys see that? Yes? So you think x is left and right, right? Because it is. But think about it. If you take this pen, if you reflect this across the x-axis, it's a vertical reflection, right? Remember, anything outside of the what? The negative. Anytime you multiply, when we multiply by negative, that was reflections. So when you multiply by negative on the outside, that's a reflection about the x-axis. If you multiply by negative on the inside, that would have been the y-axis. Okay. Um, and then, but I want the main important thing. I want you guys to see the difference here: outside, inside, outside, inside, outside, inside, outside, inside. All right. Note, make sure you guys are aware of that difference. So therefore, that's going to be up for, because if it was inside, it's going to be left and right. And then last but not least, there's a lot of twos here, a lot of twos. So let's kind of you know, simplify this out. We know we have a 2 in front. We're going to factor this. So 2p, factor out that 2. So therefore, I'm left with an x minus 1. Ah, now I see, ooh, there's a 2 out front. That's kind of like my vertical stretch again. So I'm going to say a vertical stretch you know, by a factor of 2. I have a 2 in the front. I don't want to say horizontal stretch, right? Because a horizontal stretch and a, vert like a vertical stretch, they're not going to be the same thing. This is a horizontal compression of 2. And the last thing we definitely don't want to see is right 2, because when we factor out the 2, we see it's actually only right 1. You guys see the difference? Yes, no, maybe so.